This video will take a look at accessing a Cisco 3PCC IP phone via the web interface. By default, the Cisco 3PCC phones do not have a password from factory. And we'll take a look here what kind of results we get. So I'm trying to web to the phone right now. I'm getting a message that says, please skip or set the user password in LCD to access the web page. So the next thing we need to do is we need to look at the physical phone and we should be getting a prompt right on the phone where we can press skip to skip setting the password. In this case, that's what we want to do. Okay, we're just going to simply click on skip. Okay. And let's see if we can log into the phone. Okay, the other item is if the phone is running older firmware, it's very common within your browsers. They don't they don't basically um, like devices with older form, firmware on them. So let's take a look at the product information for this phone, which will go ahead and list what firmware it's running. Okay, it's, it's very old firmware, actually, 11-11 MPP firmware. Okay, so... What we're going to do right now is I'm going to show exactly what I did here, but basically I have a PC. It's running TFTPD64, and there's two functions this TFTPD64 application is giving us. One, it's acting as a DCP server. So I have this in an isolated network, basically a PoE switch, a PC, and a phone. And basically what this DHCP server is going to do is, one, it's going to give the phone an IP address, but it's also going to tell the phone where the actual TFTP server is at. And in this case, the TFTP server is my PC. And then the other item, if you notice, the phone actually just, I, I actually rebooted the phone so it can start the process again. But if you notice, it started pulling down the files. So as we're kind of watching a phone do the firmware upgrade, if you notice in the folder here below, I have a file that says 8845-3pcc.xml. That's actually a default file that the phone, when it boots up, it's going to actually search for the file within the TFTP server. And I'll show you kind of in a little bit here exactly what the contents is. But basically, we can use this method if we have a phone that has like very old firmware, We've tried, you know, Chrome, Firefox. Also, you can try an older version of Firefox, um, older vintage of Firefox, and often that will allow you to actually access the phone. But in any case, the phone actually is showing us it's doing a firmware upgrade. And basically, we're going to go in and try to access the phone right now via Chrome. Okay, we can access the phone, which is great. And I am running this Windows uh, PC within a VM. Uh, the resolution is a little bit small in this VM, so I'm going to see if I can make some adjustments here in a few moments. But we basically want to click on Admin Login, and then we want to go to the Advanced top right corner, and then we're going to go look at the Voice Settings and let me see if I can make an adjustment here just to make a little bit more legible for us as we're viewing this. Okay. Okay, so I just um, scaled it down a little bit. We're going to go under voice provisioning. And basically, the XML file, the um, firmware upgrade rule that the, X, that the phone pulled from the XML files right here. So if you notice this, this is actually what it pulled down from the TFTP server. So if you notice, that's the actual folder of the TFTP server. I have it on desktop, TFTP, and then a subfolder with the binaries, in this case, 1135. And then inside this folder, we have the 8845-3pcc.xml file. Also, the, as I mentioned earlier, it's acting as the DHCP server. That's actual pull start address for that 192.168.2.50, size of pull 20. And then I have um, mask, class C, DNS, etc. 
So if we go into the XML file, so this will be the key component right here. So basically, I I took a donor XML file from another phone, another 3PCC phone, and I just took the firmware upgrade section, and then I modified the upgrade rule, as you see right here. So when a phone boots and it finds this TFTP server or gets information from the HCP server, it's going to automatically go and pull down these instructions, and it'll be able to update its firmware to newer firmware. So this makes it very elegant if we run into a situation. So we're going to go and take a look at the phone information again. We know we have 11.3.5 firmware, but that is not actually the latest firmware. Well, I'll show you in a moment here. Actually, we'll do one other method um, of firmware upgrades, which is the more common method. But let's take a look at the actual packets. What occurred here from a troubleshooting standpoint? If you run into issues, what kind of troubleshooting approach you can take a look at? So we're going to go ahead and reboot the phone. I have Wireshark running on the PC that's acting as a TFTP slash DHCP server. I'm doing a filter for TFTP or DHCP, so that's what you see in the display filter. And we're going to give it a few moments to boot here. Um, it's, as it's booting here, we're waiting. I'll talk about a couple other items to consider. Um, so we know, or we talked about the phones by default, the three PCC phones. Um, like the 8800 series and so forth that are with three PCC firmware, there is no default password um, on those phones. So just be aware. Um, number two, if the phone gets registered to a oh, there's DHCP. Okay, so the phone just went ahead, did a DHCP request, and then it basically uh, got a response back from DHCP server. We'll give it a few more moments. There's still some TFTP stuff that uh, we should see activity here in a few moments. But um, if the phone is registered to a service such as WebEx calling service, typically those types of services will lock the phone as far as the admin account. And typically it's a account that's auto-generated by the actual uh, server. In this you know, case, if we take a look at the WebEx calling server. So there's really no access to admin account per se. There is an option if you're doing using these phones, for example, with WebEx calling, you can enable the GUI for user level access. And I have another video I've created that talks about generating a PRT file for troubleshooting and diagnostics when you have WebEx calling, when the phone's registered to WebEx calling. And in that video, I go into how you can actually go under devices, select the phone that you're troubleshooting, and then there's a section uh, for device settings where you can actually enable the web GUI, again, user-level web GUI. does not give you an option for admin-level web GUI. But in any case, if you're troubleshooting a phone that appears to be locked, uh, one thing you may want to consider is just resetting the phone back to factor default and then logging into the phone after it's reset to factor default. If the phone has a profile on, on a service like WebEx Calling, be aware when it boots, it's going to pull it down from WebEx Calling service or another service if it has an account with another service. So you may want to put the phone in an isolated network or isolated VLAN that has no access to Internet. So when you reset it to factory default, it doesn't pull down a config and you can get into the phone. Again, this assumes the phone doesn't have super old firmware. If the phone has very old firmware, then you might be running into issue like we ran into earlier. But if we use the method that I'm kind of showing in here, you know, setting up a TFTP server, and then within the actual um, DHCP server, um, it'll have actually an option there to let the phone know what the TFTP server IP address is. And at that point, the phone knows that, it, or it's pre-configured, in the logic of the firmware that it'll be looking at the default XML file that we looked at a moment that it pulled. So here in a few moments we should be getting, so let's take a look at this. We should have some, yeah, okay, so we have some TFTP activity, great. We're going to take a look at the payload um, to see exactly what we have here. So we'll look at, first look at the DHCP packets. So that was a request, and then this is a response back. And then if we look at here under TFTP, okay, so the DHCP server told the phone what the actual TFTP server IP address is, option 66, as you can tell. 
And in this case, it happens to be the same PC that's acting as the DHCP server. And, and this thing changing here is somewhat common, where it's a server interface, a little bit annoying, but it's kind of somewhat common with TFTP D64. Typically, won't affect anything. So now let's take a look at the actual. Okay, so if you notice the phone, pulled the 8845-3pcc.xml file, as I mentioned earlier, that's built into the logic of the firmware. That's one of the actual files it looks for. And it basically, it's going to instruct the phone to config, and there's some other parameters that it has. Um, an example I showed, I actually cut down a lot of that just to keep things as simple as possible. I only focus on the firmware upgrade section, but normally there'll be a lot more information in there. I'm going to try to do an adjustment here so we can actually look at the payload to see exactly what the phone um, was pulling down in XML file. So let me just make some adjustments. Since we have a little bit lower resolution, I just need to make a little bit of room here, a little bit more real estate that we can see on the screen. Okay, so there's the actual payload portion. And then let's see, we want to look at the actual firmware file that it, it's going to digest from the TFTP server. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to the first portion of the payload of the packet. And then let's take a look here. Okay, let's go up. Okay, so there, okay, so there it is. It's a SIP 8845 underscore 65.11-3-5MPP, triple zero, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's go back to the phone TUI, telephone user interface, or LCD, if you will, product information. Or let's actually, um, actually, let's first take a look at the web interface to make sure we're able to web into it via Chrome because that, that was one of the things that was giving us a problem earlier. So we're going to go ahead and try to web in via Chrome here. Okay, it looks like it's still not liking that. So what I may do in a, here in a moment is we'll go ahead and access it via another browser. We'll just give it a moment here. Okay, so let me copy this over here. Okay, so this is an older version of Firefox. Okay, so obviously with this, there's no problems with the older version of Firefox that's able to access it. We'll take a look at here the provisioning rule. So again, this is what it pulled from the XML file. Okay, so 11.3.5. So we're, let's bump it up to the latest firmware, which will be 11.3.6. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually, I'm going to use a different computer for this. So uh, so that's the actual load. We want to do 11.3.6, which is as the recording of this video, the latest firmware load. And this, by the way, is what WebEx calling is currently using online as the recording of this video. However, this may change at the time you view this video. So if you're having issues with the phone registering to WebEx calling or other issues, kind of what I'm showing here, one of the strategies is definitely bumping the firmware up to match whatever the um, SIP server service is using. In this case, WebEx calling server as a recording of this video is using 11-3-6 or 11.3.6, if you will. Okay, so right now we're doing a firmware upgrade using the web GUI of the phone. So I, I kind of went through this kind of quickly. You can go back and stop the video. But basically what we did in the XML file earlier, I'm just now instructing the phone basically with the same logic through the web GUI of the phone since we can access the phone's web GUI uh, via the Firefox browser. Um, it just ends up being easier. Um, however, if you have a large uh, fleet of phones, then definitely you would probably use the methodology of using the XML file with the DHCP server because then you're not really having to touch all these different phones individually. You can do more as a batch job um, and execute more phones. You definitely want to do a test run with one or two phones to validate that the process works in your environment. 
and then once you validate the process, I would do a progressive uh, increase in the concurrent amount of phones I'm doing in each batch. So I wouldn't necessarily do one or two phones, and then if you have 50 phones, I you know try doing 50 phones, because if anything goes wrong, you could potentially have a very long um, type of task of trying to recover a bunch of phones if anything goes wrong. So I recommend you know just doing them in small progressive increases. First time one or two phones, if that works, try a batch of five phones. If that works, try a batch of ten phones, to a level that you feel comfortable with, but not going too high where if something goes wrong, you have a lot of phones now that you have to physically touch. So as with most of it's a balancing act, okay, it looks like it's towards the um, kind of end phase here of the firmer upgrade. Okay, so let's try now in Chrome. Okay, yep, it comes up just fine in Chrome. We're going to go down and verify the version 11-3-6. Excellent. We're going to go under voice and just take a look at the provisioning rule we put in earlier from our upgrades. And there is our rule. So hopefully this helps you with the um, accessing the phone's web GUI if you run into issues and also some example of doing firmware upgrades. Thank you very much for watching this.